Since our theme verse talks about taking heart, being brave, and trusting God even when we're scared, especially when we're scared, our first story is full of characters who take heart, and one of them is a kid just like you. A long time before Jesus was born, his ancestor Jacob's sons traveled to Egypt looking for food during a great famine. That means the rain had stopped falling, no crops were growing, and the people were very hungry. Only eleven of Jacob's twelve sons traveled there because, years before, they had sold their brother Joseph to slave traders. They were jealous because he was their father's favorite. They didn't know that Joseph, though still a slave, had become very important to the Egyptian king, called Pharaoh, because he interpreted the Pharaoh's dream and saved the entire kingdom from starving. Joseph forgave his brothers and the twelve sons of Jacob, who was now called Israel, settled in Egypt where their families grew and grew as they became parents and grandparents. Instead of being called the twelve sons of Jacob, these large families became known as the twelve tribes of Israel or the Israelites. As time went by, a new pharaoh came to power. He didn't know Joseph and he didn't remember how Joseph had saved Egypt from starvation. The new pharaoh saw how many Israelites now lived among his people and he became afraid. He thought they might take over the land or join the army of another enemy that could decide to invade Egypt. And so he made the Israelites become his slaves. He was a cruel king who forced the Israelites to work very hard building his cities and tending his crops. His soldiers often beat the Israelites, who were also called Hebrews. The pharaoh and his advisors thought if the Hebrew people worked such long and hard days that they would be too tired to think about getting married and having babies. But the Hebrews were strong. They continued marrying and having so many children that he again started to worry the slaves might soon outnumber the Egyptians, take over their kingdom, and force the Egyptians to work for them. In those days, there were no hospitals, so mothers gave birth to babies at home. Women called midwives delivered the babies. Today, there are still midwives who help women to give birth. There were two very brave Hebrew midwives named Shifra and Pua in Egypt. The pharaoh commanded them to kill all the baby boys born to Hebrew mothers as soon as they were born, letting only the baby girls live. But Shifra and Pua loved and trusted God, so they defied the Egyptian king and let all the Hebrew babies live. This made the pharaoh angry because he demanded to know why they were letting these baby boys live. Now, we are always told not to lie, right? Being honest is very important, but Shifra and Pua were, weren't trying to lie because they were selfish or trying to save themselves. They were trying to save the Hebrew boys, so they lied to the king. They said, these Hebrew women are much stronger than the women of Egypt. They don't wait for us. They deliver the babies all by themselves. But that didn't stop the Pharaoh. He ordered his people to throw every baby boy born to the Hebrew slaves into the Nile River. That's where we begin tonight's story. The part of the story I just told you was full of characters who were very resourceful. Resourceful means using your brain to think and act quickly to overcome a difficult situation. Joseph was locked in prison before he helped the first pharaoh to understand his dream. He had the idea of growing extra grain and building huge warehouses to store it in so the people would have food to eat when the rain stopped. Shifra and Pua were very clever too. They told the king a story about how strong the Hebrew women were in order to save their sons. They were resourceful and brave. Listen carefully to the story you are about to see and hear. Who is resourceful? Who is brave? Two descendants of Jacob's son Levi were living in Egypt working as slaves of the Pharaoh. They married and had children. One of them was a beautiful boy who was born after the command had been given to throw all the baby boys into the Nile River. The baby's mother hid him for three months, but when she couldn't hide him any longer, she took a basket, sealed it with tar, and put her son inside. Then she put the basket in the river and asked his big sister to watch and see what happened to him. The baby's mother's name was Jacobed, and his sister's name was Miriam.
When the Pharaoh's daughter went to the river to take a bath, she saw the basket and sent a servant to bring it to her. She looked inside the basket and found the baby. She recognized him as the child of the Hebrew slaves. She knew her father had commanded all the Israelite baby boys to be drowned in the river, but she felt sorry for him. His sister Miriam asked the Egyptian princess if she would like her to find a Hebrew mother to nurse the baby. She agreed, so Miriam brought her mother, the baby's real mother, to Pharaoh's daughter, who said, I will pay you to nurse this baby for me until he is older. Then I will adopt him as my own son and name him Moses, because I pulled him from the water. Moses grew up and became a very brave man who did great things for God. He could have spent his life pretending to be an Egyptian. After all, the Pharaoh's own daughter adopted him, so he could have lived in the royal household. But Moses would leave that life behind. He actually ran away from Egypt because he was afraid, but God knew exactly where he was. Moses became a shepherd in a place called Midian. He married a woman from Midian and they had a son of their own. While he was watching his father-in-law's flocks, an angel appeared to him. Angels are God's messengers. The angel appeared in a bush that seemed to be on fire without being burned. Then Moses heard God's voice speaking from the bush. God said that he had heard the Hebrew slaves crying. God knew their suffering and had come down to save them. He commanded Moses to go back to Egypt and confront the Pharaoh. Can you imagine a shepherd confronting the most powerful ruler in the ancient world? Moses couldn't. He asked God to tell him his name, and God said, I am who I am. Moses trusted God and stopped being afraid. He would lead the Hebrew slaves out of Egypt in the name of the great I am. By trusting God, Moses would separate the waters of the Red Sea so the people could escape the Pharaoh's army. God gave Moses the ability to make special bread, called manna, to fall down from the sky, and water pour out of a rock when the Hebrews were hungry and thirsty. Later, God would call Moses to climb a holy mountain where God would give him stone tablets containing ten important laws, called commandments, that would help the people to live the right way before God and with each other. You can find the rest of Moses' story in the book of the Bible called Exodus. Moses was one of Israel's greatest leaders, but if the Hebrew midwives, his mother and sister, and the Egyptian princess hadn't been brave and resourceful, he might have been thrown into the Nile River without a basket for a boat.